Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Central Rhode Island Chambers Education Session featuring Tom Cantorino from Level Up Digital Solutions. We're excited to have him sharing uh, online reviews and how they're key to your marketing. Uh, Tom, if you wanted to go ahead and give yourself um, a little bit of intro and then you can uh, have the screen to get started. Sure, so, so I'll put my camera on just for a minute, but then I'll turn it back off. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Tom Cantorino. I am the uh, president and founder of uh, Level Up Digital uh, Solutions. Um, we focus on everything from web development to online reviews and everything paid media and also um, SEO and getting ranked on that first page of Google. Um, today's probably one of my favorite topics to um, talk about, which is uh, reviews and reputation. Um, of course, we all can agree and we all know that reviews and reputation is super important, not for, um, for really any type of business, whether it be local, national, chain, um, small mom and pop, you name it. Um, people nowadays are relying on reviews and reputation to make their business decisions. Um, and we're going to dive in a bit more on um, uh, why I want to further make the point of why you really need to concentrate on getting a review and reputation management strategy in place um, because it's one of the, the best marketing um, vehicles and tools that you could probably, could probably use. Um, so that being said, in this session, we're going to cover a few things, um, develop an understanding of the importance of online reviews and why stakes are higher than ever, especially given the, the current digital world we're in. Um, and also learn about problems um, most local businesses face with reputation. Um, and then I'm gonna provide an innovative way um, that local businesses can generate more reviews and more of a streamlined, um, robust type of way. So it can kind of, you can be generating online reviews on many different platforms on autopilot, uh, more or less. Um, so that being said, uh, reviews and reputation really have gone a full um, 360. Um, the concept of, of reputation, of course, is really nothing new, um, but really the evolution of the smartphone technology and the subsequent increase um, in consumer adoption of online reviews um, has really amplified uh, dramatically, right? Um, so a, pivot, a, pivotable, a pivotable change occurred really in 2004 um, with the launch of Yelp. Um, all of a sudden, consumers started flocking there to leave reviews for local businesses that they interacted with. Um, and then it didn't really take long after that for Google and Facebook to really enter the online um, review space um, as well. Um, and essentially now they are both uh, leading the mainstream adoption of online reviews. Um, and to paint a picture, of course, today, really reviews are unmissable. Um, so a global phenomenon, uh, to say the least, the last three years, um, there's been an immense growth in the number, number of reviews um, left by consumers. So in the U.S. alone has seen a growth of about 617%, um, really showing that more consumers um, than ever before are reading and leaving reviews. So it really is clear. Um, that online reviews are only going to build in importance um, in the coming years. Um, and of course, we see the very, a similar trend in um, other countries as well, Canada and UK to, to name a few. Um, the latest research um, showcases just how crucial um, online reputation is for consumers. 97% um, of uh, folks search online to find a local business and 95% of consumers read online reviews for local businesses. So this really just shows how integral um, online search um, and reputation management are to the uh, modern consumer's uh, buying journey. Um, and really a lot, although a lot of business owners care about their reputation, um, if not all, uh, sadly, there's not all are spending enough time evaluating um, how they're being portrayed online. Um, so with so many eyes on every business's online reviews every day, um, the stakes continue, continue day over day really rise uh, dramatically. So in the past, um, customer feedback would be temporary 
um, and often is limited to say your local circle or your referral circle, et cetera. Um, but really we now live in a world where a single piece of feedback um, can really be seen by anyone who looks at your business online. Um, and these comments will likely stay there um, uh, forever, right? So why is this important? Um, why is this important now? Um, and a few, um, I, I added this slide in um, because it's just a few headlines I've been seeing in the past uh, few months, um, in the past six months where we've been living, we've all been living through this COVID uh, age, if you will. Um, and of course, online reviews were always a, a huge um, importance, but now more than ever, since there's so many folks that are either working from home or are either teaching their kids, kids cool at home or just there's ordering food online. Um, there's a lot more folks that are um, sitting behind a screen um, and they're, they're starting to shop and they're shopping a lot more uh, from their, um, their devices. So uh, we're not only seeing, it's, we know that reviews are important outside of if we weren't living in a COVID world, but now that we are essentially living in this new normal, it's just amplifying um, and exacerbating the real crucial need um, for having a strategy in place to make sure you um, are, are poised well online. Um, and really, we can break down the role of online reviews in um, the buying the buyer's journey into three aspects. Um, and that is discover, evaluate, um, and then tr and build the trust. So in discover, so the in the first stage is discovery. Um, having more positive online reviews, um, you have a better chance of ranking higher um, in local searches in Google. Um, believe it or not, um, reviews uh, as a ranking signal um, for Google is about 25% of your overall ranking um, algorithm. So the more reviews you have, the more and more um, visibility you're going to get uh, inside of Google and essentially the at the end of the day, we want to get on that first page of Google. So this really means new potential customers are more likely to find your business when they're, um, when they're now searching. The next stage is um, in the journey is evaluation. So your customers might be evaluating you on Google, on Yelp, or a niche type of business directory uh, for your industry. There's about 180 to, to 200 different online review directories, um, and many of those are niche specific. So as a potential customer evaluates your listing and star ratings, they're also at that same time evaluating your competitors as well. Um, so more often than not, uh, they will reach out to the business with the best reputation, um, right? So the benefit of online reviews is twofold. Your reviews are making you rank higher, um, then, and then they're also um, getting you more clicks and calls than your competitors. And then finally, uh, online, the last stage is um, online reviews build trust in abundance. Um, a business with a great online reputation uh, will really establish uh, great trust with a prospect before they've even spoken to them. So not only will you rank higher, you get more clicks and calls and visibility, but customers will essentially be easier to sell to. Um, and at the end of the day, they're more likely to buy um, more from you because of your online reviews. So um, imagine someone, we get this all the time with the folks that we, um, that we partner with is a lot of their new business really stems from um, their positive reviews inside of the different search platforms. Um, and then one thing, we can't really control is how potential customers find us, right? So consumers are using more sites um, now than ever before. Um, and it's really important to work out what sites your target market is searching on and really focus on building out a solid reputation um, on each one of those. Um, I always say Google is obviously the most important one to start with, um, but, but just if you take a step, step back, you can really try to consider how a prospect might research your business um, and where they might find you and what the reviews might say. Um, uh, so really the thing is getting reviews online is about helping you attract more reviews on websites where people are looking um, and where the eyeballs are. Um, and obviously everyone knows the big ones, 
um, the, the top ones, like I said, Google, Facebook, and Yelp. Um, but there's a lot more, um, uh, there's a lot more out there. And with everything we've looked at so far, we know that reviews hold so much power um, for a business. Um, but the truth is that businesses are actually at a huge um, disadvantage um, because an unhappy customer is far um, more likely uh, to leave a review unprompted than a happy customer is. So it's really an unfair fight from the get-go. Um, so if we look at an example, right? So let's look at this example of a business that's not managing their online reputation. You can see here that Jimmy's Plumbing has a total of three reviews with an average star rating of 3.7 out of five. And we would say that's not so bad. Um, it's nearly four stars, right? Um, but what the research tells us is the exact opposite. So nearly 60% of consumers won't use a business with fewer than five stars. And even if they contact him um, with less than 10 reviews, it's gonna be tough for him to build trust with whomever he speaks to. So today's consumers want to choose a business with lots of great reviews that have been posted recently. So essentially, um, by not having a solid re reputation strategy and leading this to chance, you're really losing uh, customers and, re and revenue every single day while potential any competitors with a solid strategy will pull farther and farther away from you. Um, and Google is changing constantly. I spend a lot of time educating myself and the folks that are on my team about all the different changes that are happening in Google. They are launching new algorithms each quarter. Um, one of the most recent one is, is um, which recently hit our local area, is if someone was to put the word best in front of a search term, a localized search term, so if it says best plumber near me or best lawyer near me, etc., cetera, um, Google is now going to uh, prompt you with a, a, a way you can start to filter local businesses. Um, so for those that don't know, this is the local map pack. So if you put in landscaping contractors in Providence or Cranston, Rhode Island, et cetera, you're going to see the local map pack. And the three pack is essentially what Google says are the three best businesses um, in, the, in that local regionized, regionalized area. Um, but now, if, the, if, a, if a prospect is now typing the word best, um, it's giving them the opportunity to now uh, sort and filter. So it's furthermore making your online review presence that much more important. And I, I like to show this example um, because this is a, a real world example, which is um, someone that I was working with, actually a family member um, that I was working with um, a few years back. Um, I built their website and I did a bunch of, I was gonna be doing a bunch of marketing. Um, and I knew that if we were gonna spend dollars on Facebook and then Google, and Google pay-per-click ads, et cetera, I knew that we needed to have a, a solid reputation in place. Cause essentially we can spend those ad dollars, but what's gonna happen is research shows that the average consumer is then just going to go to Google, they're going to search for the business, and then this is what they're going to see. They're going to see the business they searched and two of their competitors. So nine out of 10 people, uh, when I asked this question, who would you call first, right? Is it Roundtree? Is it Scapes? Is it the Sea Green Company? 90% um, uh, of the folks that I asked, it's Scapes. And why is it Scapes? It's because Scapes has the highest amount of reviews, they have the highest star rating, et cetera. The bad thing that I had to um, let my family member know, is, and they own Roundtree in, in, da oops, in Dallas. Um, so I knew that in order to um, start to get some, in order for us to be successful in our paid, um, paid advertising inside of Google or Facebook, I knew we needed to get there reputation built up, right? So I knew they had a good website, but now they need to have a good reputation because we can spend all those ad dollars and those ad dollars, guess what? Are probably gonna go to their competitors. Um, so we wanna make sure that the folks that we were working with are being represented correctly um, online. 
Um, and there's a lot of different important uh, factors that go inside of reviews. Um, so it's really not just, so these all dictate um, uh, what Google likes to say as the, um, how strong or how trusted you are as a, as a local business. So not only are they of course looking at the average star rating, um, but they're also looking at the total number of reviews. They're looking at the frequency. Google, Google tells us that they want to see at least two new reviews every single month. Um, and then they want to also see um, a certain amount of reviews across other uh, platforms as well. Um, and they're also looking at how a business is responding to negative reviews as well. It's, it's super important um, to not only respond to positive reviews, but it is important to respond to those negative reviews. Um, I know personally, if I research a, a business and I do see a one star, um, normally it's not gonna deter, deter me from going or, or um, going to that business because there's always two sides of the story, but it's also going to um, kind of really make me trust the business even more if I see the manager or the business owner is responding back to that negative review with kind of their take um, and their response, just so you can kind of really see um, uh, the other side of the story, if you will. And then also, believe it or not, Google is also combing these reviews and they're, they're reading the sentiments um, of the reviews. So um, Google has spider bots that are essentially crawling and reading everyone's website um, uh, week over week, month over month. So they're pulling all those words out, um, all those like those key nugget words, good, bad, ugly, um, mean, et cetera. And they're throwing them all into their overall um, uh, algorithm. And really reviews influence um, all leads, right? And even personal referrals. So the thing is that um, personal referrals are of course super important, um, but now we know with the power of reviews that we can take those personal referrals and, take, and, and make sure that those personal referrals are now online. So everyone can be able to see them and not just in an immediate circle. Um, so this is how most people think um, marketing works, right? And this is, these are all completely valid, awesome ways to drive more business um, to, um, uh, to your business, right? So of course the chamber, referrals, TV, website, Facebook, Google, newspaper, print, et cetera. Now we have to remember that, yes, this could be, we could be sending all this traffic to our website, but what's really happening now is we're not only sending traffic to your website, but we're sending traffic to your Facebook, to your Google, to personal references, to Yelp, to any of the industry specific directories. Um, and then the consumer is really doing a few things, right? They're, they're then gonna go start to go shopping. Um, so we did a good job at do, getting all these marketing tactics in place um, to drive people to um, your destination. But we know in marketing, we need about seven to 10 touch points before anyone um, makes any type of conversion, right? So those people are going to then start to go shopping. So same thing that happened in this, um, in this scenario, right? So we knew that we wanted to start spending money on all these different type of um, uh, marketing programs. Um, but essentially, if we were gonna spend money on Facebook and Google and newspaper, we were not only going to get visibility for ourselves, but then we were getting visibility for our two competitors, right? So if, but if we had say 30 reviews and we had a five-star rating across the board, that return on investment would probably be a lot greater because we can track um, people that came from our reviews, uh, people that came to our Google My Business profile and then took some sort of action. So I wanted to uh, kind of just give a, a quick case study of this similar, um, uh, the similar case in Dallas with the landscaping. Um, and I wanted to show how many potential opportunities that round tree um, is missing, right? So when I do a, a Google search for Dallas landscaping, Google tells me that there is an average of 880 searches um, that have been every single month in Google 
for that specific um, for that specific keyword. So what that means is that's over 10,000 searches a year just for the term Dallas landscaping. And that's not even counting all the different variations of, of that, that keyword, Dallas landscaping um, near me, uh, the best Dallas landscaping, et cetera. So if we're just looking at the keyword Dallas landscaping, that's how many people are searching it uh, for that keyword um, in, a, in a year. Um, and essentially that 10,560 searches are potential customers, right? It's, um, we could be driving those customers to a competitor um, when they could really take a simple step to, um, to solve that and to be able to put a very simple strategy in place to make sure that we're not sending those customers um, elsewhere and we're cap capturing them as well. Um, so, that's really what I want to um, help understand. Um, and I know that there is, um, and what the, so when we look at all that, right? And what is the average dollar um, in landscaping? Um, and the question is how many customers would it take for Roundtree um, to recapture just, um, to justify addressing um, this issue, right? And it's, probably just one. Um, and we say that because um, businesses assume that they've done all they can to get reviews. Um, and there are a lot of different strategies that we've seen people do um, to try to get more reviews that really don't work, right? So, or they said that they've asked their happiest customers, they've trained their employees to ask, um, they provide an awesome service, um, they bug all their friends and family um, into reviewing, but essentially what happens? The reviews are almost, they almost never come. Um, and here's why. So it's really because of three, and all the case studies that we've done to date, we know that it's because of these really three reasons. They don't have time, they forgot, or they don't know how. And believe it or not, the I don't know how is probably the, 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 the biggest one. Um, so, and really there's lots of businesses assume that there really isn't a way, um, to solve this. Um, and there's a lot of folks that have really given up on finding a solution and just letting, um, letting the folks leave a review when they want to, where they want to, et cetera. Um, but really there are some simple things, um, we know that you can do to make it really easy make it quick and convenient um, and be able to remind them all at that same time and really make it easy to allow really anyone to be able to do this. And so let's start with making it easy, right? So for those of you who haven't um, uh, seen or worked with us in the past, we're gonna walk through um, that now. And we have, um, I'm gonna show you one of the innovative ways um, on. On a, on a reputation manager um, that we actually built in house um, that we're having really great success with a bunch of other um, local businesses in the area. Um, and it's called Review Lead. Um, so really Review Lead at, at the core is a, the, the, the platform works by asking customers to leave reviews um, on the most important sites really. And it really is helping to drive um, your online reputation um, performance. Uh, forward, right? And there's a layer of intelligence to the platform. So the first step um, is an MPS survey, um, which is really a customer satisfaction score that asks them to, ex to rate their experience from one to 10. Um, so if the customer has had a good experience, um, they're then prompted to leave a review online on Google or any site um, that you choose. So sim simply, it, it looks something like this. Um, it's a dashboard, uh, sorry, it's a landing page. They come to uh, this page. They have a, a very simple call to action. Did they have a good experience? Did they have a bad experience? If they had a good experience, um, what's gonna happen is it's going to open up another window that looks something like this. Um, and with one click of a button, um, it's going to take them directly to that review platform. It's gonna open up the review window 
and they're going to be able to write their review write that in there press submit and it's done they don't have to fumble of where to go of what to do um, and, and how to do it and that works across all we so we now partner with about 180 review platforms um, so we can put we normally always put google top on the top and biggest um, but we can also put a any a number of all the other ones in there as well um, all from the very, very niche specific, Zillow, Realtor, um, a place for mom, caring.com, et cetera. They can all be intertwined in here um, as well. And it's similar, sim it, when you just click that Google button, it then takes you to where you need to leave that review. You press post and it is what it is. Um, and then the system is very smart because it pacifies. Um, if someone has had a negative experience, um, and, is, and is unhappy with the service provided, um, the platform apologizes um, and, and can automatically do things like offer discounts to try to um, and recover the relationship with the customer. Um, but now we still need them to um, leave them an option to leave a review in order to stay within Google's guidelines. But there are steps in place to try and negate the customer's frustrations before they go public with a review. Um, so very similarly, um, let's rewind for a second, right? So what happens if some, someone presses the thumbs down button and they said they had a bad experience? Um, well, guess what we don't want them to do? We don't want them to go to all the other platforms, to Google, to Yelp, to Facebook, because we know it's fairly hard to get that negative, negative review removed from those um, directories. So if they click they had a bad experience, it's going to it's going to gatekeep them. We're not going to send them off to Google to leave a review. Um, we're going to open up a, a form fill. So they're able to um, they're able to vent or uh, privately email the business, the manager, the business owner um, in a more private manner. Um, now they don't know this is a, a, a private manner, more or less. They don't know if they click the thumbs up button that they were going to be then sent to Google. Um, this is just a way for them to um, express any of their concerns um, and to give feedback for the business, right? So um, this is also really important because um, a lot of folks that we work with, um, there's a lot of good learnings that can come out of this. Um, maybe there is an employee that um, spoke inappropriately to someone. Um, Maybe there was just a, a miscommunication in something, um, but this gives the way for if someone was to fill this out, it gets immediately sent to the business owner or whomever is in charge or whoever we want to send these uh, feedback forms to. Um, and then that business owner or whoever is responsible is able to take it offline, is able to get the, the customer's information, um, phone number and give them a, a, a a, a give them a call. Um, and believe it or not, we found that not only are some of these feedback forms then turning into four or five star reviews, but um, like I said, it's a really good um, process and, and internal learning uh, for your, you and your um, staff. And so now we know another part of the issue was they don't remember, right? So how do we help them um, remember? Um, and the platform uh, and, and our service has a bunch of different built-in um, uh, built features, right? So we add a review us button directly on, on the website. So again, if they were to click that button, they would be able to see that, um, that landing page. We also have a built-in email reminder uh, drip sequence. It's a series of three emails that we, that we send out on your behalf. Um, it looks like they're being sent from you. Um, they're being sent from our um, platform. Um, but if someone was to reply or whatnot to any of the emails, they would essentially be, um, that, that reply would be sent directly to um, yourself. And these are all completely customizable to um, the business's kind of aesthetics, look and feel, colors, um, vernaculars, the way if you say, if you call your customers members or prospects or what, what have you, um, or clients, um, that's all completely customized to um, any of the business that we are working with. Um, and these emails are, they're very light. Um, they're not intrusive, they're not aggressive. Um, it's just 
uh, very simply asking folks um, uh, if they had a good experience, and if they did have a good experience to um, leave a review and it would mean a lot to us, right? We are seeing about 90% of those review conversions happen on that third or sometimes even a fourth email um, because we, in that third or fourth email, we're gonna tell them this is our final um, email to you all. Um, we appreciate your business. Um, if you could take three minutes or two minutes or really 30 seconds to quickly write your feedback, um, it would mean a lot. And then it's done and they are removed from the, the, the sequence and they're never gonna be bothered um, again. Of course, all these emails have built in, um, we follow all very strict can spam uh, laws. So there is a one click opt out. So if someone doesn't want to see another one of these emails, there's just a one click of a button and they will never see, they'll be opted out, they'll be unsubscribed um, and they won't be emailed again. Um, and then we also pair these, this email reminder system with a, um, a text message reminder. So we know that we get a lot of really great engagement when we do send text messages um, because the landing page and our service and platform is mobile responsive. So um, when someone was to see this text come through, they're able to just click on that uh, link and it again, sends them directly to that thumbs up, thumbs down page. Um, we also provide um, another feature, which is the thumbs up, thumbs down directly on um, that can be embedded uh, in an email signature. So again, it's just another touch point. It's another uh, visit, um, a visibil having a bit more visibility to the folks that you or your staff might be emailing with um, and just a, a, a very indirect reminder that they are able to leave that review right, there, right then and there. Um, and it's also really good um, for um, in, if employees um, are communicating with um, clients or customers or whomever, um, it's a good way to um, keep kind of a pulse on making sure they are speaking appropriately and they're um, uh, talking appropriately to the folks that they're emailing with. Um, it's very similar to if you think of when you're driving on the highway, you see the how's my, how's my driving bumper sticker. Um, it's, it's really kind of essentially the same, but in a digital format, um, because it's really calling out that, hey, if I'm going to talk bad to you, or if I'm going to give you a bad experience, you're, I'm giving you an option to then voice that concern to um, the powers that, that be. Um, and how else should um, you use reviews and some of the, the other features that we use to then, once we get those five-star reviews in, we want to make sure we are showing the, them off wherever, wherever possible. Um, so we also can embed those reviews uh, directly on a website. So you can, in real time, you can see um, the reviews kind of scrolling um, or on a carousel. Um, and they're all those authentic reviews. So people can literally click on the review and it, it, it brings them directly to where that review um, uh, was left. So you can get some more authentic and trust building. And it's instead of having those kind of static um, reviews that we, we all see or have on our websites to date. Um, and then we also do something pretty, pretty awesome that we call is humble bragging. Um, so what we do is we want to, on your behalf, we are going to share um, these reviews to your Facebook, to your Twitter um, in a very elegant way. So we're gonna package it in a in an image that looks some, something similar to you see on screen. Um, and we're going to post this to your Facebook or to your Twitter on your behalf. Um, and not only is it building, it's not only adding some content um, to your social media pages, but it's also further providing trust um, and it's giving more content for engagement. So here we can see how many people the post has reached, how much engagement it's getting, we are seeing really a lot of engagement around these type of posts because people are then being prompted um, to leave their own reviews right on that post. They're being, they're saying, they're liking it, they're sharing it, they're commenting it. The more engagement that that post gets, the more visibility um, Facebook is going to um, show off that um, particular post. Um, and we also have. Um, 
some of the think of spas or folks that are see, have, bringing people into their brick and mortar, uh, we have a kiosk mode as well. So if someone was signing out or signing in, there is a way if you use an iPad um, or any type of tablet, there is a way to um, uh, get feedback during your face-to-face -face, um, interaction, interaction at the end of the customer experience. Um, so you can simply present the feedback web page to the customer um, via a tablet. Um, think of if you have a waiting room, you can put a laptop in there uh, with the feedback form um, uh, loaded up as well. Um, and what's really great um, about all this is the real um, detailed um, reporting that we provide on a monthly basis. Um, so you can really start to, and you can really read all the different um, reviews that are coming in, how, many, how it has affected your overall review and reputation, um, and where there might may or may not be room for um, improvement. Um, as well as um, something recent that we're um, about to, to launch is in um, is a, a, a dashboard for the folks that we work with. So you're able to um, pull, it's going to pull together all of your public online reviews for your business. So you're able to um, reply and manage your reviews more effectively, um, really in a single, um, in a single dashboard. Um, so you can sign into that. If you get a five-star review, you can, you can quickly uh, respond directly in our platform. Um, and the beautiful thing about all of this that I haven't mentioned yet, yet is the, the service we provide um, is completely white glove, right? So it is um, soup to nuts. We do all the heavy lifting. We do all the outreach. We are not gonna, just going to give you the keys and have you run with it. Um, we take everything on ourselves, um, which is a big differentiator um, in the market right now is we know that um, the folks that we're partnering with have plenty of other things to be um, worrying about. Um, and if this, this is one thing that is not only super important, but it's something that most times kind of gets swept under the rug or um, is just something that it gets back burnered, right? Um, and it's, it's no one's fault, but we know that we've had success when we're just able to partner with the folks we work with and really do all that heavy lifting. The only thing we ask for um, on a monthly basis is a, if there is a, a new client list, if there's a new customer list, um, if there's any changes to the business, if there is a new review platform that we should be targeting, um, we'll talk with the business owner or the management um, to get that new list so we can have some uh, fresh contacts um, to then target um, in the next month um, uh, going forward. Um, and then all of this, of course, is paired with um, uh, new review notifications. So whenever a new review um, comes in, uh, you're going to get that notification um, in real time. So you're able to react faster wherever, whenever um, uh, you are. And what's really fun about the entire process is you get to watch your reputation um, and review um, reviews grow over time. Um, it doesn't happen uh, in just one month. Um, it is an ongoing um, uh, program, if you will, because we know that we can't, we can't just turn off reviews. We know that one of the, the biggest signals inside of Google is Google wants to see new reviews every month, right? So, um, and we know that um, the average consumer, if your review, if your last review was from 2017, there's no trust there, right? So they want to, people want to see um, a, a new review in each month, at least um, two months old. Um, in a few case studies, um, so we currently help um, the Central Chamber uh, of Rhode Island with, uh, in the past few months, uh, getting reviews across various different platforms. Um, it's, last time I checked, I believe we've gotten about 37 uh, new five-star reviews uh, for the Chamber. And it, what's really exciting is now when you search for Chamber of Commerce in Rhode Island, um, the central Rhode Island chamber um, actually looks like the number one authoritative uh, chamber because they have the most reviews, they have the highest star rating than any of the other chambers um, in 
the Rhode Island area. So you can see how powerful that is when someone is going to potentially look to join um, a chamber, um, they might call the central chamber uh, first. Um, just a few other uh, case studies, um, uh, a law firm that we work with, uh, you can see um, since June, I mean, we continuously drive more and more reviews month over month. Um, it's really interesting to, to be able to see right when we start working with someone because of the dramatic uptick. Um, similarly, a, a mortgage um, uh, company that we work with as well started about the same time. Uh, and we are continuously seeing the review um, uh, reviews go up and up and up. Um, here's another one of a, of a recent customer that we started working with in the past two weeks. Um, uh, in the past two weeks alone, um, this is probably one of our most profound um, uh, case studies, if you will, simply because that they had such a, a long list of folks that haven't been touched yet um, and haven't even been asked um, that we were really quickly able to start to generate them um, more reviews in very short order. Um, so I'll leave it at this. So what is your current uh, review situation? And it's likely not what um, you think, right? So, and I wanna help, we wanna help you find out. So we are, we, we wanna provide a review report um, for the folks on this call. So simply all you have to do is go to um, the website that you see uh, listed above, uh, levelupdigitalagency.com forward slash let's find out. Um, there's a few questions in there um, that you need to fill out. Um, and essentially, um, we will then do a, a deep audit for you for free. So there's no strings attached. We're going to pull um, an audit of over 180 different review platforms. Um, and we may be able to show you um, reviews that you may not know um, you even have, right? We're able to kind of give you a really good bird's eye view on, um, on your reviews across all those different platforms um, and then provide some, some recommendations. Um, and also it's in the benefit of the folks on this call because there's not too many people on this call. So uh, the odds are probably very good of um, the survey prize. So we provide, we're gonna provide uh, six months of review lead uh, for free, just for filling out um, the survey. So I know that there's a handful of folks on the call, so there's probably a good um, a good chance that um, uh, you will win. It's not like the one in one million odds. It's probably one in a one in five. Um, so I'm going to stop there. I know I covered a lot. Um, if there are any questions, um, feel free to. Um, uh, let me know. And what I'll do is let me see if I can, I will try to drop this link. I can drop the link directly in the chat. So if anyone is interested, uh, feel free. Great. Thank you, Tom, so much. So um, I do want to see if there's any questions out there. I know I have a question and Lauren has a couple questions. Um, does anybody before we we kind of put ours out there does anybody have a, a question for tom yes denise um tom have you worked with any licensed security firms where there is a lot of compliance issues with uh reviews and testing? Wait, what was the which one what uh, industry have you worked with any securities based, um, you know, licensed security licensed firms where there is a lot of compliance issues with testimonials and reviews? Um, off the top of my head, I do not believe so. I would have to look in all the into the compliance um, issue. What are the do you know what the specific compliances are? Well, Can you not actively solicit? Issues. Like we can't, you know, we can't even comment if somebody makes a comment on our Facebook page. Really? Um, yeah, we can't, you know, we wouldn't be able to put up um, like a link on our website saying, you know, let us know how we're doing. We wouldn't be able to do anything like that. So we're really limited. 
So I would really like to chat with you offline to discuss what perhaps we could do yeah, um, sure. with those limitations. Yeah, and I would love to educate myself too, just so I can, because I know um, it sounds similar to, uh, so we work with a few in, insurance um, agencies as well. Um, and I know that there was um, recently, um, there was a change in legislative or, or something that uh, is enabling um, insurance folks to now start to be able to ask for reviews, which is something very extremely um, new. So it might be something similar that is around exactly that. Correct. Yes, May Got 5th, it. we were able to ask for testimonials, but we're still very, very limited in um, the wording and, and, and how we go about it and where we, um, yeah, so there's just a lot, but I absolutely love your program. Awesome. So cool. I would love to chat with you a little bit more about it. Cool. Yeah. Let me make a note. Okay. Anybody else have a question? I do. Yes. Go ahead, um, Cassie. Tom, I know there's different philosophies out there about how to handle a negative review. Um, and I had one, it had to have been three years ago now, you know, one of those clients is never going to be satisfied no matter what you do and mm -hmm. put something up that was totally not true. And yeah. I just said, um, you know, I, I'm really sorry to hear that you, you know, had that experience. Um, something about there being, you know, my take on it is different from yours or whatever. And then I said, if you would like to chat more, I would be happy to discuss this with you outside of this forum or something like that. Um, sure. Is that a way to handle it? Or should you put more stuff in there? So when other reviewers look at it, they know what the details are. I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a great question. And it's something that we are constantly educating the folks that we work with about because um, one is I never look at a negative, a negative review as a negative because there's a few things, not only, I mean, is it always recommended to do exactly what you did, respond um, very professionally and, and with facts and with data, um, but you can also then, so say you were, I don't know what your profession is, but say you were an ins I'm insurance. I'm a lawyer. A lawyer, okay. So you can start to... Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, keyword research and trying to get ranking inside of, so for instance, so lawyers near me is a, probably a keyword that you want to be ranking for um, in your local, um, in the local Rhode Island area, right? So you can, you can use um, the responding back to those reviews and you can start putting those keywords in very indirectly in your response. Um, because then it starts to tell Google, oh, that this person is um, a lawyer or this, that keyword is kind of um, uh, associated with your practice. So not only, I mean, is it always best practice to respond back with all the facts, with all the data um, as best you can, um, but then to also take it that step further and kind of, if you know you have a certain handful of keywords and you want to very indirectly try to plop those in there, it's only going to help you. Um, and to that point, um, another recent um, Google update um, is they are now enabling us to fight negative reviews. So if a negative review wow. is, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a really, it's a complete uh, 360 um, because it normally used to be impossible. They used to tell us if you get a negative review, you need at least a hundred new reviews to push that um, push that negative review down. But depending on the situation, um, we have had recently we've had really great success with um, getting negative reviews dropped off, whether it be two or three years old, um, or whether it just be completely, whether there be profanity, whether there it be non-factual, um, et cetera. We work with them um, and then uh, um, an employment agency um, who had a, a, ter a termination um, and that we were able to fight that negative review because we were able to say that that employee was, hasn't been um, associated with um, that business for X amount of years. And with documentation, we were able to get that review um, rem removed. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I would love to at least just try to give you some pointers maybe offline of how I could at least help get that negative review because 
um, it's exciting for us because it's something that um, uh, is is really new, right? Um, but yeah, I had always so, heard it took an act of God to get one of those removed. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it does. It, it really does. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, there is a, like you said, there's a lot of people that, I mean, are going to, you're never, you're going to have one or two of those really unhappy customers, but responding the way you did um, is, is super important and is just, um, it is, is really the best you can do. But we also know that with that active, um, actively asking for reviews um, is really giving people that avenue to, for them to then give their feedback in a more private manner. Um, because we have now hit the past month, we've brought in 5,000 five-star reviews for the folks we work with. Um, and 98% of those are five-star reviews and only 2% have bypassed everything and have, have left, a, uh, have done a feedback form. So we know that out of the thousands and thousands of people that we are outreaching to, um, yes, some feedback forms might come in, um, but with that active strategy, we know that we're, we're pacifying or we're, we're trying to solve um, for whatever the frustration. A lot of people like to hide behind their screens, so it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So Tom, before we end, um, Lauren, did you want to go ahead? So I, Tom gave us one thing to do. I'm kind of looking for if there's three things we should do today, Tom, to get started to really look at this, what are those three things? The three things. So I, first thing I would do is um, go to your Google My Business profile. And I would hope everyone has a Google My Business profile. Look at your reviews. Um, make sure you have responded back to um, both positive and negative reviews. Um, of course, it's a lot more important to respond back to negative reviews than it is positive, but it's still showing that um, the business owner cares. Um, then I would also um, urge folks to look at their reviews on, so we look at, there's three big players in the review uh, landscape, um, and that's really Google, Facebook, and Yelp. So I would also look at um, uh, Facebook and Yelp to make sure that if you guys, if the folks on the call have a presence. Um, uh, if you do or don't get a listing set up, it's free. Um, and also then still be responding and be replying to those um, reviews as well. Um, I would also recommend um, if folks do not have any type of CRM system um, to uh, look at getting some sort of CRM system in place, whether it be QuickBooks, whether it be I mean, there's loads of them, Zoho, Salesforce, et cetera, to be able to be cap capturing um, members, clients, prospects, leads, information. Um, so you're able to then be, um, whether you go with a service like ours or, or do it yourself or, or something else, you then have all the, the necessary data to be, able to, do, to be able to do those active outreaches. So um, again, thank you, Tom. This was fabulous. His information is here. If you, you can also look at our directory online if you want to contact him as well or reach out to myself or Lauren. Thanks, everyone.